I um didn't want to pile on when Kefels is apparently going through a lot of harassment and stalking and shit, but apparently she seems to be happy to pile on to other people right now and for literally like completely made up bullshit reasons rather than actually valid criticisms. So I think it is um more than okay for me to call her out for doing what I think is probably the worst thing I have ever seen any like remotely like leftist sort of commentator do that so clearly goes against their principles and not just once but multiple times and that is so clear cl so clearly an actual example of the sort of hypocrisy that she is accusing others of exhibiting. I've been like a friendly acquaintance with Keffels for at least a year or two now. So um you know, I don't want to just like leave Luna who is someone who I have a lot of my own criticisms of but nonetheless this, this criticism of her is just incredibly dishonest it's just pure virtue signaling I'm not going to just leave her to the the literal pack of rabid imperialist racist dogs so um if you want to talk about possibly the worst thing I've ever seen anyone do like anyone in this sort of ridiculous internet personality so-called leftist sphere it's not luna oi selling land which literally by the way literally no one thinks it's wrong to sell land that's not a thing that anyone actually believes no one thinks it's wrong to just have some land and sell it when you don't want to use it anymore we're gonna we're gonna get into that further down in the stream they had to make up a bunch of shit about luna to make it seem bad like they had to make up her being a landlord even though selling land doesn't make you a landlord they had to make up her being a land speculator, even though selling land doesn't make you a land speculator. A land speculator is someone who buys land with the intent of selling it for a profit later on. That's literally what speculation means, like you're taking a speculative gamble on the price rising so that you make money off it. Yeah, and there's also no evidence that the supposed Facebook post was real. Not that it would be bad if it was, because selling $15,000 worth of land is literally nothing. That's fucking nothing. What else are you supposed to do with land that you own when you don't want to use anymore just leave it there just give it away like for free for charity or something none of you people would do that none of the them would do that we're talking about people like Keffels makes hundreds of thousand dollars a year she just got donated hundred thousand dollars and she's like yelling at someone for selling from what i know from what luna has talked about before it's very likely the same plot of land that she's talking about before which was literally a 500 square meter rice plot which is literally nothing Th that grows like 200 fucking dollars worth of rice per year it's straight up nothing imagine like yelling at yelling at someone for that right after you make like two hundred thousand dollars from a gofundme and right after bragging on discord that you make six figures from your stream it's just so fucking bizarre but that's not the worst part of it. we're gonna get into that further in depth in a second i'll show you the worst part of it so first up, right after moving to Northern Ireland, you know, which is understandable given what was happening to Keffels in Canada and also uh, perhaps she went to other places too, I don't know. Um, she moved in there with a friend who lives there and um, that friend is apparently like a massive liberal and Keffels like immediately dropped all of her purported principles to just back up this liberal's incredibly problematic political opinions. Here's one of them. So her friend posted saying, if I can appeal to the posters on Twitter for one minute, don't blame this on normal unionists. They're my good friends and neighbors, and they're good people. This place is complex, and this tiny number of individuals is the extreme. Keffels quote tweets this and says, important to mention this. Okay, so if you don't know what a unionist is, it's someone who wants Northern Ireland to remain a part of the British colonial empire. A unionist is like someone who supports the Israeli occupation of Palestine. It's someone who supports like the Russian occupation of Ukraine, things like that. So to like be like unionists are normal everyday people. No, no, they're not. No. <laughs> Like, it's one thing to just be just a random apolitical person who doesn't pay any attention to any of this shit. Even though, you know, that's still a bit sus, because how do you not notice it if you live in Northern Ireland? It's another thing to be an outright unionist. That's taking a pro-colonialism pro position. There's nothing normal about that. They're not your friends and neighbors. They're not good people. Unless you're, of course, a, a sympathizer with colonialism, then maybe they are. May maybe Keffels has posts denouncing... Irish colonialism, because I know she has it in the past, but I don't know if she's deleted them or if they were from other Twitter accounts from years ago. But I know that this is not what she believes. I know that she doesn't believe that Irish unionists are good, normal, everyday people. I know that she knows that this is complete and fucking total bullshit. Feels like he supports the Holocaust. I've talked to her before, and I know that she doesn't believe this. She used to post about shit, you know, just being completely against this shit all the time. And now, all of a sudden, it's the complete opposite. All because I guess it's more convenient to her. Not only that, but she praised the 
Northern Irish police force here. And she did it again in another case, which is even worse. So here's probably the worst thing that she did. So this guy right here, Paul Bloomer, he is a communications officer for <laughs> the Northern Irish police force, LGBT police UK. His job essentially is to do queer washing for the British colonial police force in Northern Ireland, okay? That's his explicit job. That's what communications mean. It's police propaganda department. So if you don't know about the history of the Northern Irish police force, which is still the same institution today, just with the name changed, the Northern Irish police force previously was called the Royal Ulster Constabulary, And um, that was a fascist colonial death squad backed by the UK state. It wasn't like a normal everyday police force that's there to oppress the prol proletarians. It was... It was and still is a police force that is there explicitly as to back British colonial power to, to oppress native Irish people for British colonialism. And this guy, he's from the PR department of that police force, straight up. Communications, LGBT police, UK, trans ally. Oh, wow, great. While enforcing British colonialism in Northern Ireland, it's, it's so great that you're a trans ally and also gay while doing that, dude. It, this is the same sort of shit that Israel does all the time. Intersectional imperialism. Intersectional colonialism. What does Keffels do? Keffels is someone who absolutely knows that this Communism is wrong. Is based. She knows this is bullshit. She knows that she should not be posing for propaganda photos with the Irish colonial, the Northern Irish colonial occupying police force. What does she do? Ah, uh, she I'm poses assuming. for a propaganda photo with this fucking guy. Not just that, like she wasn't just like roped into a, an awkward photo without realizing it. She responds. It was very cool meeting the person who is currently at the top of the leaderboard for gayest cop in Ireland. This is the worst, the worst thing I have seen anyone do in this entire idiotic politics, leftist, streamer sphere place thing that we're all in. This is the worst. It's not very brain dead, Communism okay? is based. She knows this is wrong. She knows why it's wrong. What's happened here is just her class interests no longer align with being explicitly against the cops and against colonialism because now she's actually in Northern Ireland herself. The British state in this case is protecting her. So I guess it's time to praise them. Now, I don't blame anyone for getting help from the cops if it's your only option. In this case, it very obviously was because the only option the state leaves you is, is the cops a lot of the time. It's not, there's nothing wrong with calling the cops when you're being stalked by fucking insane fascists from Kiwi Farms, but it's a whole nother thing to do queer washing propaganda for the Irish colonial police force. This would be bad enough if we were talking about a normal police force, obviously. All cops the bastards. You don't do fucking propaganda photo ops for the cops. It doesn't matter where you are. But doing it in the context of Northern Ireland and they're talking about, you know, helping out this guy to whose explicit job it is to paint them as epic progressive and pro-gay and trans rights, etc. When what their real purpose is, is to enforce British colonialism in Ireland. That's a whole nother thing. This is even worse than something that's already completely indefensible. It's like triple indefensible. It's fucked up. And I know that Kevels knows that this is bad. I know that she knows why it's bad. You know, I, I know that she's she knows what colonialism is. She knows why colonialism is bad. Um, it's just very disappointing to see how quickly someone will betray their purported principles the second that they happen to be to benefit from the brutal oppression of the British state in this case. And I'm not blaming her for that, because whatever option did she have, right? Just, you know, that's fine. Go there, live with someone who's willing to let you stay with them when you're being stalked by fucking Kiwi Farms weirdos. But doing this is a whole nother thing. No one forced you to do gay washing propaganda for the fucking Royal Ulster Constabulary. Give me a break. So it's like London, Ontario police swat you, point a gun at your head. Boo, they suck because of that. Northern Irish colonial police treat you nice and use you for PR purposes. They're good cops. There's nothing wrong with them. It's not that all cops are bastards anymore, only the, the cops that wrong you personally are bastards. You know, let's ignore the broader context of what they do systemically of what their purpose is. Why are British cops in Northern Ireland? Let's just fucking ignore that because they treated me well. They were nice to me. They helped me out. You know, totally different to the cops in Canada who were not nice to me, who didn't help me out, who treated me very badly, actually. This is something that everyone needs to be aware that they sh they need to be careful not to fall into. The second that your own personal interests might no longer align with what your principles are, you can't just drop them immediately. You can't just, you know, let your personal circumstances change who you are and what you believe, which is what's happening here. Now, all cops aren't bastards anymore. Some cops are good, some cops are bad, and whether they're good or bad doesn't depend on their, you know, the, the broader systemic purpose of all police forces. It doesn't depend on the even worse context of the Northern Irish Colonial Police Force. 
All that it depends on is how well they treat me personally. This is straight up the worst thing I've ever seen. You know, any person in this leftist sphere doing it's incredibly disappointing because it's coming from someone who I respected, from someone who I know, at least before this happened, at least before she got extremely famous, at least before she was making a lot of money, at least before she fell in with a bunch of liberal streamers, she believed the complete opposite to this. And, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't give a shit about this otherwise. It's the only reason that I care about this is because I know that Keffels wasn't like this before, and now she is. So now that we've got that thing out of the way, which is something that, you know, as I said, I wasn't particularly enthusiastic about talking about. I actually, you know, I had some other creators message me saying, are you going to, like, talk about Keffel's whitewashing colonialism in Northern Ireland? I, I specifically said to them, um, I don't want to do that because of what she's going through right now. But, you know, obviously she's not going through anything as bad as I perhaps thought that she was if she has the time to shit on Luna Oi, who is just being targeted by liberals constantly. Basically, for being a Vietnamese person who speaks English in, in an English-speaking space and who's opinion represents the political opinion of the average rep Vietnamese person, which is, you know, might, might be imperfect, but it's certainly far more radical than your average liberal Twitch streamer, a lot of whom Kethel seems to have no issue with. Let's take a look at, let's take a look at the, the video, the epic Kethel's Luna Oi video. Luna Oi is everything I hate about Marxism-Leninism. Is this market socialism? Man, I can't wait to parody this thumbnail. Can't wait to see how her own medicine tastes. So just to make sure that I'm not misrepresenting her, we're gonna go through this entire video. I'm, I guess I'll play it on like 1.25 speed and we'll check it out. So I don't know like a lot of the backstory. I just know who Luna is. Luna is a Marxist Leninist YouTuber who lives in Hanoi, Vietnam. And she lives in Da Nang. Basically her entire internet presence is dedicated to schooling is liberals based. and trying to shame them into being Marxist Leninists online. That's I don't think that's what her entire internet from you know is about at all. Pretty sure Luna is pretty much just explicitly focused on presenting Vietnam to an English speaking audience. Like that's obviously just framing her in the way that liberals would like her to be framed. This is like destiny sort of framing right there. And you know, you might not like what she has to say, but I think you might want to think about why you don't like it, right? Like, do you? dislike oh, it I'm consuming. because she might be a bit over enthusiastic about Vietnam because she might be a bit superlative about it or do you dislike it because she's a Vietnamese person who represents an average Vietnamese perspective in an English speaking space which doesn't particularly align with what a lot of Westerners want to believe that people from countries like Vietnam that are victims of that colonialism that are trying to build a different economic system think and I, I wouldn't have said that Kefels is number two until now or at least the people who she's trying to appeal to of this video are certainly in that number two camp. They're just enraged that um, they see a Vietnamese person who isn't denouncing Vietnam every two seconds. You know, we're talking about people who love Joe Biden. They post the epic dark Brandon memes every two seconds. But you know, you know what needs criticism? It's not Joe Biden. It's not dark Brandon. It's the Vietnamese government that is objectively better than the Democratic Party who they support in every single way, shape and form. I think it's kind of interesting how as soon as we're no longer talking about white people, like we need these sorts of ex very exaggerated denouncements of them and we need to virtue signal our hatred to our hatred of them to other streamers to let them know, to let their audience know that we are a part of that club and that they can come and watch us and give us clout. Very interesting. It's basically what she does. And there, there was a, like a lot of drama over the past year over a lot of shit. And I basically avoided it. Um, I, you know, you know me, I used to be part of the communist party. I was at one point of time, a party member, a Marxist Leninist. I ran for parliament as a Marxist Leninist, but that's not something that I really believe anymore. And one of the things that I, w I wonder what she does believe. I wonder how she would describe herself. Cause this is a pretty rapid change. I really don't like specifically is with every ML country. I can name a handful of the very fuck is an email country. cool and good things that they have done. However, generally the people who are the most ardent defenders mm -hmm. of these countries will downplay or straight up lie. Luna's perspective isn't even really explicitly Marxist Leninist. You could like the average politi remotely politically engaged Vietnamese person. Most of them are going to tell you the same exact shit she does. You know, so to to be someone who is basically that in an English speaking sphere and to get enraged at her and to target her specifically, it's very suspect. It's in incredibly fucking suspect, especially when a lot of a lot of Kefels' best fucking friends are far worse than her. You know, you could speculate on why Luna thinks the way she does, you know. Maybe she really just does love the policies that she does because they have her government happen happen to be doing them. You know, maybe she does. 
Well, I don't fucking care. It's the same effect either way because the Vietnamese government's policy politics are still better than your countries, than the, the people who I'm not going to say you because I don't really know what Kethel thinks anymore, honestly. But at least then, like, what a lot of her friends support, and a lot of the people who call Luna like a tanky red fash or whatever, a eh, so much, uh, just so much further than the right to the right than her, and so much more willing to compromise with the right as well than she is. Yet she's the one who deserves to be attacked. I wonder why. I wonder if it has something to do with her being a Vietnamese person in a space of people from countries that have historically tried to destroy Vietnam, and that perhaps are not deep down, at least subconsciously, not particularly happy about the fact that they failed. Who knows? The bad things. They never present it in a balanced way. And that's what I have a big problem with. Like, I've been to Cuba multiple times. I think Cuba is a great country, for instance. I love that they have constitutional reforms that happen. I like that their police force is not very militarized. I like that um, social housing and socialized education and healthcare are very big things that the Cuban government cares about. But All of those things are big in Vietnam as well. But there are bad things that Cuba has done, not the worst, but this applies to like every ML country. And the reason I'm bringing this up is- It doesn't make sense though, because do you think Luna would, would say there's literally nothing bad that Vietnam has ever done? I think like she's kind of equating here. When well, you're going to see what it is, it's, it's really just, it's so nothing that it's very clearly just her trying to pile on to an ongoing racist attack against Luna. But like to, to claim that she doesn't think anything, there's anything bad about Vietnam is obviously bullshit. It's self-evidently bullshit. And she's not going to be able to provide any coherent examples of that. Because it kind of ties into what happened with Luna Oi and how it kind of, it exemplifies the problems that I have with Marxist Leninists and why I ultimately decided to leave the party and to stop being a Marxist Look, Leninist. Look, I gotta say, if you change your political beliefs, because people around you who claim to share those same political beliefs, like do it in the in a way that you don't like, you'd never actually held those political beliefs. It sounds like you aren't a Marxist Leninist. It sounds like you were just a member of a club more than anything else. Because that's not politics. I don't change my beliefs because people who I don't like, you know, share those beliefs or people share those same, belie same beliefs, but um, a bit, are a bit too exaggerated about them or whatever. It just doesn't make any sense. Luna Oi makes Vietnam the template for us all to strive for. Is this a shit post? Like, that's a shit post. There's got to be a shit post. That's, oh, that's her stance. Yeah. And that's. And I got to say, too, it's very interesting how Kefels. You won't find a single video on her channel about American imperialism, about, you know, anything to do with Western imperialism. What you will find, however, is one video about Luna Oi. It's the same thing with all these people who attack Luna Oi. You know, when you go to that channel and they have more videos attacking a single Vietnamese YouTuber, like the only fucking one in this entire English-speaking space, le le like so-called leftist politics space, they have more videos attacking one YouTuber and fixating on Vietnam specifically just out of spite. For her, you know, they have more videos on that than they do ever talking about, like, the US imperialism that straight up genocided millions of people in her country. The US imperialism that her country is still beholden to, to this very day. You know, it's like, it's just so fucking transparent what it's really about, regardless of how much they say, Oh, I also oppose US imperialism. Well, if you also oppose US imperialism, I think you'd have like a thousand times more videos about that than you would about one single Vietnamese YouTuber, wouldn't you? But you don't, so it's really fucking clear the game you're playing at here. Actions speak louder than disclaimers, okay? Doesn't make any sense. Like one thing that is particularly <laughs> frustrating to me with Luna is that she uses the rhetoric of American progressives <laughs> in order to attack America, like in order to attack people for not believing what she believes. She especially um, talks a lot about being a person of color. And in the context of Canada, the United States, that's absolutely true. In the context this of is, Vietnam- This is so stupid, you won't believe it. That is not true whatsoever. And there are a How it, lot more racialized people who have a far harder time in day-to-day -day life in Vietnam. Do you, do you know what, what Luna Oi means when she says that? Okay, so Luna Oi is a Vietnamese woman speaking English in an English-speaking space with an audience of like 99.9% .9 Westerners. Do you think she might experience racism for being a person of color in that space? Especially for being a person of color who doesn't conform to the Western idea of what she should be 
in what she should believe. Yeah, obviously she fucking does. Obviously it's it's relevant that she is a so-called person of color in this situation. Not to mention that being a person, like just in general, a person of color in, in the world, in the um, capitalist world system is also very fucking relevant. If you don't think that the Vietnam War, United States, French colonialism, etc. in Vietnam had anything to do with the race of the victims, you're fucking laughing. If you don't think the legacies of that of that still today have anything to do with the race of those victims, you, you're just fucking laughing. Yeah, I mean, I don't need to say much more about that, do I? That's just self-evidently stupid. Especially indigenous people in Vietnam. Especially indigenous people in Vietnam. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Vietnam is not a settler colonial state at all. You can't just apply the colonial relation to every single country you see, every single country that is ethnic minorities. You can't just apply the framework of what the West and other countries like, you know, Japan, etc., have inflicted upon other countries and be like, oh, Vietnam has ethnic minorities too. Therefore, these people are indigenous and Vietnamese people are colonizers or whatever. That's not how it fucking works. A group as indigenous means that you are necessarily framing Vietnam as a settler colonial state because otherwise it can't be indigenous people in it because indigenous people are not people who, ha who happen to have roots from a certain place, you know? Otherwise, that would make Vietnamese people indigenous too. It just, it's just incoherent. But, you know, that's a, a minor thing. It just, it's just... Her, like, trying to latch on to random shit to attack Luna, to try and, like, frame Luna as just as bad as, you know, Westerners who support American imperialism, who support colonialism, etc., when obviously it's not the same thing at all. The thing that I have an issue- Like, they're just trying to throw shit at her until it sticks. ...with was this, and I thought it was very funny. So, someone said, Vietnam is literally becoming more capitalist every day. And she said, Prosperity does not equal capitalism. We are a socialist-oriented market economy. 70% of people are farmers. Land is free to farmers. Capitalists can't own land, and minority work for wages. If you don't believe in our socialism, we don't care. We want our revolution so we can build our way. But then someone found her Facebook, where she said- I just want to note that this is, this is straight up doxing, because Luna's real name is not public. So Kefels is, after being doxed, just happily doxing Luna, are based off like a spurious Facebook post that, by the way, this is like a screenshot that no one has ever actually shown to be her at all. Not that that's relevant at all, because if from where what we're going to see here, it's it's absolutely nothing. Like, if the Hassan House argument was stupid as fuck, this is literally 5,000 times stupider. Selling a big plot of land and the description for the plot of land that she is selling suitable for investment. Gar so she's selling a big plot of land, it says. What makes it big? How big is it? I already know what plot of land this is because these fucking morons have talked about it before. They previously tried to frame Luna as being like some sort of massive landowner when she owns 500 square meters of productive farmland. Now, 500 square meters of productive farmland is the size of the average American yard for, for context. If it's even her, we don't know that. They've provided, I want to emphasize here, they've provided no proof for any of their claims about this. They've provided no proof for this even being a real, a real Facebook post, no proof for this being her, they have provided no proof for not simply being a fake account. They have provided no proof for why this is bad at all. Like, they've said she's a landlord. Owning land and selling it when you don't want to use it anymore doesn't make you a landlord. A landlord is someone who rents out land to other people for a profit. They have called her a land speculator. A land speculator is someone who buys land for the express purpose of rendering a profit from it later. That's what speculation means. It means that you're literally speculating on the land gaining value later on so you can make money off just selling it. There's no proof of that here. All we see is someone selling land. What's what's wrong with that exactly? Does selling your house or your farmland or whatever you don't want to use anymore make you a landlord? Does it make you a land speculator? Obviously fucking not. What else are you going to do with it? Just give it away for free? I bet you wouldn't do that either. Do you think Hassan didn't sell his old house when he moved into his new one? Does that make him a landlord land speculator? Or is he just getting rid of something that doesn't fucking need anymore? <laughs> have, has your family ever sold a house or land? Has anyone in your family sold a house or land? Have you sold a house or land? Well, looks like you're a landlord land speculator, I guess. This is completely nonsensical garbage. It's people trying to get mad at something that they know. They, they, they know they have no actually no fucking problem with, problem with, but because of who it is. I'm sorry to say it, but out of, out of racism. 
out of just bog standard generic racism. They need to attack it. Now, she's going to try to justify this in a second. You're going to see what it is. She's going to say that Luna said capitalists can't own land, but then Luna sells her land for investment purposes. Like, she, she advertises it, you know, it's big lady can buy it for investment purposes, blah, blah, blah. Well, for one, I don't give a shit. If I'm selling something, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to take whatever I can get. I don't care why they're buying it for. It's not on me to, like, have moral purity and just... You know, Late hang rates, on to, like, land that I don't fucking need anymore forever because the person who's selling it might want to do something bad of it. That's on them. It's not on me. And I'm sure anyone would agree in this case. You know, none of these people would avoid selling their house to, like, you know, some rich piece of shit if that rich piece of shit gave them the best offer for it. But the thing is, Keffels is going to say that because Luna is selling land and specifically selling land and advertising it as potentially for investment purposes, that means that what she said about capitalists being unable to own land in Vietnam in the previous tweet is false. Okay? Except in Vietnam, you can't own land. Capitalists can't own land either. You own land usage rights, which you buy from the government, and which you are allowed to trade over people. So the ultimate owner of the land is always the state. Now, I don't particularly give a shit if you don't think this is socialist or whatever, because it's still, factually, objectively, you can't own the land. And the state holds a set of very exceptional rights that most other countries in the world don't have, and which the people who criticize her for this would fucking kill to have in their countries. Like, I'm sure you would fucking love it if the US state had the option to appropriate Tesla motors whenever it fucking wanted. Or if the US state had the, op had the option to appropriate a bunch of fucking, like, agribusiness farmland whenever they fucking wanted. But they can't, because in your state, you're totally cucked by private property rights. Your state owns almost nothing in comparison to what the private sector owns. In Vietnam, the state has far more options to actually, you know, appropriate land and do shit with it, as they have done many times in the past. That's why they've actually done land reform quite a few times. So what she said here is not untrue at all. This is, in fact, the exact same way that the system of um, housing and land, etc. works in Cuba, which Keffels a second ago was praising. But I guess because in this moment it's convenient for us to attack Luna, we need to change our belief. And the exact same system is now bad. It's now not what she said, she's lying about it, even though very clearly she's not. Like, if you misunderstand what she meant by that, that's on you, it's not on her. You could have Googled it in two seconds rather than just showing a tweet and being like, this tweet sucks and not explaining why. She's going to say basically everything that I just said. I just preemptively debunked it, which I probably shouldn't have done. I probably should have let her speak first, but, you know. Camping area or homestay. So for only 400 million dong, you can for own- only 400 million dong, which is 15,000 US dollars, by the way. You want to know how much Kiffles makes per year? Well, at this point, it's easily 200, 3,000, 400,000, I would estimate. 15,000 dollars? Man, me, woman in, col literally, I can call her a colonizer in, in Northern Ireland, considering she's expressed support for Northern Irish colonialism. Me, woman, straight up supporting settler colonialism in Northern Ireland, making fucking bank, making more than you did off this land sale in a month. Yeah, in a single month of my streaming. This is problematic. This is kind of problematic that you're selling this land, my dude. This beautiful plot of land, very good investment for your business. Stop making fun of the currency. Yes, it's called dong, okay? That's not funny. A dong is just a Vietnamese dollar. Stop it. I fucking hate you, chat. You're terrible sometimes. Okay, yeah, just get out of your system. Laugh about it now so I can move on. All right, all right, just, just keep laughing. We'll, we'll get through it and we'll move on and... <laughs> but this is, this is what I mean. This that, is that's what you mean. That's what you mean. She's selling her land usage rights to someone else because she doesn't need to use it anymore. Yeah, that's, that's what you mean. Like, none of, none of that is incompatible with what she said earlier. You know, it's a bit superlative. It's obviously quite nationalistic. But why does this merit, like, incredibly specific denouncement aside from the fact that you're trying to appeal to Vosch's audience who hate her for being a Vietnamese woman, for being a Vietnamese woman who denounces US imperialism specifically? You gotta wonder. She, you know, she's super lady with, like, prosperity, capitalism, blah, blah, blah. We are a socialist-oriented market economy. But the actual facts that she states after that are not untrue. 70% of people are farmers, true. Land is free to farmers. Yeah, true. If you're a farmer in Vietnam, you can apply to be essentially gifted land usage rights to a plot of your own farmland. That's how Luna got hers. Capitalists can't own land. True, the state owns all land. And a minority of people work for wages. That is true. Most people in Vietnam are farmers who own their own land. Or who at least, you know, have the land usage rights to run their own land and then sell it afterwards to someone else if they don't want to use it anymore. You would fucking kill to have this system in your countries unless you're a right winger now. You would kill to have this sort of thing in your countries. Yeah, this is what you hate about Marxism and Leninism. Like, you, you hate that someone is being, like, using a bit too, um, propagand propagandy-sounding terms to refer- and then 
stating a bunch of objective facts about the, the government policies in their country. That's what you hate about it. I don't think that's what you hate about it. I, I mean, it just sounds like you're trying to couch an attack on Luna specifically, because I guess you wanted to make a video about her with a, this very banal critique of like Twitter Marxist Leninists who are very annoying sometimes, I agree, because it pays to attack Luna Oi. It's a rite of passage when you're trying to appeal to a certain liberal streamer market to attack her because they fucking despise her for daring to be an average Vietnamese person with average Vietnamese political opinions in an English-speaking space. That's just sad. We'll, we'll get through it and we'll move on. And <laughs> But this is, this is what I mean. This is my issue. This is ultimately one of the biggest issues that I have with Marxism-Leninism. It's like, was the Vietnamese revolution a good thing? Objectively, it was a great thing for Vietnam. They took control of their country from a colonial occupying force and they were able to have national self-determination and build up infrastructure and support their people. That's that's great. That's 10 out of 10. Very cool thing to do. But my problem is when you obfuscate for ideological reasons. She wasn't obfuscating. Every single actual fact that she said in that tweet is objectively true. This is no obfuscation involved. All of the bad things. It's possible to have solidarity with... Okay. I don't know what she means by bad things, but let's talk about why Vietnam is the way it is today. Because the US sanctioned Vietnam following its genocidal invasion, and it removing the sanctions, the sanctions was contingent on Vietnam implementing a certain set of neoliberal reforms called Dao Moi. I, I didn't pronounce that correctly, obviously. And Vietnam, the Vietnamese government, decided that actually being able to trade with other countries would benefit their country more than trying to be a completely isolated self-sufficient, you know, so-called socialist system. You know, all the things that you are claiming to be bad about Vietnam here, they are a result of U.S. imperialism. Vietnam was genocided by the U.S. The country was completely destroyed. You know, the Vietnamese people, government, blah, 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 tried to rebuild it, tried to build a flawed socialist system. They tried, and then it was like, oh, you know, maybe we can't do this alone. Maybe we can't rebuild our genocided and destroyed country with our international trade options completely limited by U.S. and Western imperialism. Maybe we, we just have to make fucking concessions to them that might on paper go against our principles, but... Sometimes doing things that go against your principles are required because there are external forces that are trying to destroy your country and trying to destroy, you know, whatever manifestation of your principles that you might be trying to implement, which in this case was objectively happening. So it's important to bring up that context because if you're not bringing it up, you're do just doing apologism for US imperialism. It's like framing those things as like the fault of Vietnam rather than the fault of something that Vietnam has been forced into. A country without necessarily 100% supporting them. Too often, Marxist-Leninists use the term critical support. But when they say critical support, usually they mean ultra super mega support. Do not criticize this country. And Okay. I want her to apply this to her, her best friend, Vosh, okay? This critique of, like, what she calls Marxist Leninists, which is mostly just people on Twitter, apply it to people like that who support Joe Biden and the Democratic Party of the US, actual reprehensible genocidal war criminals, actual straight-up right-wing segregationists, etc. Let's apply that to them. Let's apply that to them posting epic dark brand memes. Let's apply that to them whitewashing the things that these people do. Let's apply that to them never criticizing these people and getting extremely angry when anyone tells them that perhaps these people aren't the end-all be-all and perhaps you shouldn't literally just support them outright until the end of time. Let's see her reply that to um, a, certain, a certain streamer saying that it's your obligation to support moderate fascists. I'd love to see that. Marxist-Leninists have uncritical support, blah, 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 blah. Your best friend. The Social Democrats are the moderate wing of fascism, but supporting moderate fascists over radical fascists is a moral imperative. It's a moral imperative to support fascists, okay? Feels like he supports the Holocaust. Don't build anything better. Don't, don't you dare try to build anything better. Don't you dare just like reluctantly cast a vote for the Democrats. Don't just reluctantly cast a vote for the slightly worse fascists. No, you must outright support them. Not critical support, full-blown support. Wow, I, I'm waiting for any sort of denouncement of this, but I mean, it's not it's not helpful to your clout to your building of clout networks to to make fun of this completely ridiculous shit that is a million times worse than what you're talking about and a million times more prevalent and far more of an actual issue in the real world because it is factually something that happens all the time where democrats and people like this who are functionally just democrats shout down anyone who dares to talk about building something better especially to actually combat US imperialism as like wrecker behavior 
you know, we can never do that because we must always support the Democrats forever, uncritically, of course. That's incredibly silly. Like, a personal story of mine. So when I was oh in God, this is so bad. the party and the Communist Party of Canada does a lot of solidarity work with Cuba. Um, a lot they do tourism trips. It's not solidarity work, whatever, whatever they call them. It's not it's not real solidarity work. A lot of people go there, do volunteer labor and stuff and uh, work on committees trying to end the blockade. I, I remember a conversation between this really young guy and he was approaching Miguel Figueroa, who was um, basically instrumental in keeping the party alive after the fall of the Soviet Union. And the kid, he asked him about smoking in Cuba. And he said that Cuba has incredibly strict anti-smoking laws and you can't smoke in public because when Fidel Castro got cancer, they decided to take it more seriously. And when I heard that, I literally said, why are you lying? Like, I said that to his face. Like, why are you lying to this? Ah, I'm consuming. Uh, I just searched Google and... um. There's like five different articles right here on Cuba passing strict anti-smoking laws. Laws. Why was he lying? He wasn't. This is from 2005. It's about um, a law that bans smoking in most public places. So yeah, it sounds like they, they did change their smoking laws in 2005, which I imagine was before this trip happened. And let's see what her reason for this supposedly being a lie is rather than the actual law kid like right in front of the kid because when i was in cuba my ex got alcohol poisoning and when i was in the hospital visiting them there was a fucking nurse smoking a cigarette by the hospital window okay they, that's just not so wait someone broke the law cuba is not anti-smoking because someone broke a law that's your grand debunking of, of someone saying something objectively correct about cuba is you saw someone smoking in cuba once and let's just appreciate the weirdness of your your partner needing medical um, assistance in Cuba and you getting it completely for free, no questions asked from the Cuban state despite being a foreigner there. But what you remember about that is not what they did for you. It's that you saw a nurse smoking and this apparently reflects badly on all of Cuba. Like it, it, denou it like debunks the existence of Cuban laws rather than just, there's just being one person breaking the law. You think people don't break the law in Cuba? You think people don't do bad things in as individuals in Cuba? Like, is, is Cuba like an, an entity? This is just nonsensical. This makes no fucking sense. I don't need to say anything more about that. True. And this is, this is what I mean. Like, you can say the good things about a Marxist-Leninist country, but you don't need to lie. It actively makes you all of the examples that she has provided of lying here i'm not saying that no one lies about these countries surely they do but all of the examples that she provided here are not examples of people lying about cuba or vietnam at all and i've already gone over why not so it really comes off as just grasping at straws because she wanted to latch on and attack Luna for the completely idiotic attacks on her that make absolutely no sense whatsoever. They're all lying, as I said. All of them are lies. They've gone over all of the excuses. None of them have been able to provide any proof for it so far. First it was, um, Luna is a landlord. There's no evidence at all that she was renting that land or any other land. Luna is a land speculator. There's no evidence that she brought that that she bought that land with the intent to sell it rather than just selling it because she doesn't want it anymore. There, uh, there was also um, Luna stole that land from indigenous people, which, for one, there's also no proof of that. For two, they said the land is supposedly in Hanoi. There's no so-called indigenous people around Hanoi. The, the people that these people would probably consider indigenous are more located in the central highlands, which is much further to the south, so that just makes no sense at all. It's like they're just going down a list of things that they've heard other people say about them and trying to see if one of them can stick. They don't actually believe that any of these things are bad. They're just like trying to attack her for like a random list of things, none of which they have even remotely come close to proving or they even remotely have any reason to actually suspect at all. It's pure smear of bullshit. And I expected far better from Keffels to not participate in this sort of idiotic fucking liberal streamer clout chasing pure drama content bullshit look worse if you lie because you want to paint a country you like in this super idealistic way where you're always looking at it through rose-tinted glasses. The reality of all of these places is that they're incredibly messy. Yeah, it makes it look like you're covering things up and it's like, I support Cuba. Do you support the end of Irish colonialism? I absolutely support Cuba. Will I talk about the Cuban family code? I really wish I got into it. Um, it's obviously like really fucking based what they did. And it made me so sad when a couple years ago, Cuba decided to drop same-sex marriage, but they ended up turning it around. And also that they have um, non-commercial surrogacy, which is awesome. Basically, um, you can be a surrogate, but you can't do so for commercial reasons, which creates an entire surrogacy industry as a nation, not a tea party. Absolutely.
So I was like a little worried about covering this specifically because I don't like- You should be because, not because, you know, it's, it's bad to talk about Vietnam or whatever. I, I've talked about Vietnam in detail before and I've said a lot so-called of that so-called bad things about it, but I put them into context. I understand why Vietnam is the way it is. And I'm not just randomly bringing it up just because I want to virtue signal to a liberal streamer audience that I'm on their side. They can feel safe watching me. They should come and watch my content too. That's what this is. That's why these people talk about Vietnam. If Luna Oi didn't exist, not one single one of these liberal streamers would ever even have even noticed Vietnam's existence. That's the only fucking reason they talk about Vietnam. Ha Most of them have more videos about Vietnam than you do about fucking US imperialism. And they do about the US imperialism that has specifically ravaged Vietnam and forced Vietnam to compromise the way that it has today. Who have molded the Vietnamese state in ways that I'm sure Keffels, at least a year ago, would have thought were negative, but which she is apparently no longer willing to attribute to the US. Because all of this is just about attacking the Vietnamese woman because she talks about her country in terms that are a bit too glowing. I think you should think about why seeing a Vietnamese woman have opinions that are a counter to what Westerners would like to think that a Vietnamese woman is supposed to have about her country, that it's like a repressive, evil commie hellscape or blah 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 blah. Why does that enrage you so much? Why does that need a video specifically about it where you call her out for shit that is just not true at all, multiple times, but we don't need any video about the genocidal destruction of her country or the US imperialism that has molded her country into being in the imperfect state that it is today. I think we know the answer to that question. This is a virtue signaling, you know, suck up to people like Vosh and other such liberals. Slap fight trauma, very much. But I also thought it was important to point out, and especially because I get questioned a lot about my political views since leaving the Communist Party. And there's a lot of things I still adamantly support. I support social housing. I support socialized healthcare and education. I believe that everyone should have the right to a job. I want there to be better wages and stronger union protections. And ultimately... I so you support, like, basically all the things that Vietnam has, but somehow we still need to attack Vietnam? I mean, like, I agree. In my opinion, Vietnam isn't socialist or whatever. Not that I particularly give a shit about that, because when it comes down to it, in the world system that we're in today, maintaining sovereignty against Western imperialism is an achievement in of itself, whether you're socialist or not. And Vietnam is certainly a lot closer to the ideals that she just mentioned than any of the countries that she has a lot less bad, a lot less to say about than any of the YouTubers from those countries that she's certainly not attacking. You know, where's the, the attacks on the fucking rabid Joe Biden supporters who claim they only reluctantly voted for him and now who literally fucking outright deep throat his cock at every opportunity. That's a, a real issue in these spaces. Not one random YouTube with like 50k subs who makes videos about Vietnamese cooking and who does vlogs where she goes on a train in fucking Hanoi or whatever. Because that's what her actual channel content is mostly about. It's a fucking so transparent what this is about, man. I would love to see more democratic control over the workplace. But there are a lot of things I absolutely do not support. And it was basically irreconcilable. Are tankies not MLers? It's, it's like, I don't know how to answer that question because I feel like if you ask like 10 different people what tanky means, you're going to get 10 different answers. Tankies use the language of MLs, but not all MLs. This, this, this sucks for Kefals because I know that she thinks it's all bullshit. I know that she thinks the whole tanky phrasing and all that stuff. I know that she thinks this is bullshit. And now her audience is full of these sorts of people who are like, goddamn fucking tankies. You know what the real problem is? It's not US imperialism. It's none of that. It's the goddamn tankies desperately trying to maintain some, sem some semblance of national sovereignty against US imperialism. And anyone who expresses any sort of even lukewarm for support for that, they are a goddamn red fash tanky. And you can see her sort of straining here being like, is this really what my audience is now? Yeah, it is. It is. And I think that's sad as well. Or tankies. I mean, yeah, I think there's also like a big difference between people who are involved in the real world in communist organizations and the kind of like Stalin profile picture people who are just like Stalin did nothing wrong. Uh, the Holodomer was well, not. Those people don't matter. They're not real. That anonymous accounts on Twitter. Who fucking cares? Real or if it was real, then also that's what I mean. Like this is all Twitter politics mostly. Like a lot of a lot of this is just motivated by seeing people who, who you don't like on Twitter and then applying what they say to other people and then attacking that person. Ukrainians deserved it or some shit like and treating it as something like oh, real. And yeah, I mean, depends on what she means by a more. She could just mean the famine or she could mean like the intentional in the intentional genocide narrative, which isn't true. But um, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt there and, mean, and, and assume that she means just the famine in general. That's insane. Those people are fucked. And thankfully, that's mostly just an internet thing. 
But from my it own is. experiences in the Communist Party, people obviously did not believe that shit. They defended Stalin more than I was comfortable with, but it was not like this fucking edgelord teenager thing. A lot of ML parties around the world are supporting Russia, not Ukraine. Oh my God. Well, it wasn't a big reason you left because you can support- A lot of these people say ML parties when what they really mean are mostly like um, parties in third world imperialized nations that are explicitly active victims of US imperialism that have to side with Russian Russian imperialism, etc. because they have such a limited pool of allies that the support from Russia and China, however limited it may be, is absolutely crucial for them to be able to survive. So like to- also, just make the that Hong statement. Kong protesters as a member of the party. Yes. Just make that statement. To re remove from any context is also pretty fucked. Like I can't imagine any of these people would yell at fucking Zelensky for begging the U.S. for support and being like, "Oh, the U.S. is a bastion of freedom and democracy. Please give us weapons." But when someone from a third world nation that is under siege from U.S. imperialism plays the other side because it's the only option that they have to them, that requires announcement. We need to talk about the bad ML tankies in that case. They're just so fucking blatant, man. Because um, when I ran in the 2019 federal election, I had to support the Chinese police because that was the official stance of the Communist Party. And I was incredibly fucking uncomfortable with that stance. And my, my choice- I mean, that's very cringe, but it's, it's not really anything out of, out of the ordinary for political parties to force their members and especially their candidates to maintain a certain list of, of policy positions. And I don't agree with that because, I mean- People should be allowed to protest in Hong Kong, but also the, most of the protesters, like 90% of them, were fucking cringe people who want British colonialism to come back. So, um, you know, not the greatest, but, you know, it's one thing to leave a party because you disagree with them. It's another thing to frame that party um, to having a completely relatively normal thing in politics, which is, you know, a set of a set of principles that candidates and members are expected to at least publicly um, advocate for is nothing remotely out of the ordinary. Was either to support the stance. Yeah, it's like... That is a good point. I don't know how I didn't mention this then right away, but like, you know, Chinese police, bad, you shouldn't support them. Irish colonial police. Irish colonial police. Now that's good. Now that's okay. Now there's nothing wrong with that, my friends. I love the gayest cop in Ireland. I love the Irish colonial police. They treated me so well. She literally said that, by the way. Let me show you. I prefer Irish cops to Canadian cops because I didn't even get a gun to my place. 10 out of 10, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's a joke. It's still not very funny to be like... Irish cops, too. These aren't Irish cops. These are British colonial cops. I love the gayest cops in Ireland. I, I'm, all, I'm all for not supporting cops anywhere. I'm also, I'm all for not supporting Chinese cops. But, um, Kefels isn't. So, and she made this video long after she tweeted this out, long after she'd gone and had a great time with the fucking guy whose job it is to do rainbow washing propaganda. If it's wrong to support the Chinese cops, why is it wrong to do fucking PR? Enthusiastically do PR for the, the British colonial occupying police force in Ireland. I guess we'll never know. I guess, you know, your principles only go as far, you know, your principles only last as long as they are convenient for you personally. And then once the cops start benefiting you personally in another place, they're suddenly great. And suddenly all cops are no longer bastards. Or leave the party that all of my friends were in. It was really gross. Uh, certain other big political streamers are moving their belief that the Hong Kong protests are just a fascist. I don't, I don't care. I do not. Like, regardless if it is or is not some sort of psyop, I am not going to support the fucking cops. Like, Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? I, I, are you are you are you a hundred are you a hundred percent sure that you're you're not you're not gonna support the fucking cops? It seems like you are gonna support the fucking cops when when they are nice to you when you benefit from their monopoly on state violence in a colony. It sounds like they're fine then. It sounds it sounds like you like that. This is just so fucking blatant, man. Can you imagine if I did anything like even even remotely spinnable? like this not not even this like like not even remotely spinnable like this like if some cop like took a picture of me and i didn't even realize he was a cop and then he posted it or something and i didn't endorse it or whatever i guarantee you like liberal streamer fans would be like ha 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 bad empanara loves the cops but somehow this is totally fine with those same people who would say that shit about me i fucking hate this streamer fear this is this is why i've stopped streaming recently because this is not Politics streaming. This is all just people whose politics and their political positions is entirely based on spite. What they will talk about is entirely based on spite. What they will talk about is entirely based on what the people who they dislike are talking about and trying to, you know, take the opposite position or to spin whatever they're saying in the least honest way as possible to attack them in order to virtue signal to your audience that, you know, you hate the right people, etc, etc.
Such a fucking jerk. I'm not going to take the side of the police overtaking the side of working class people who are in the streets protesting because- uh, But you are going to take the side of the police against the Irish people who they are colonizing and fucking- real. Poor living conditions and political resentment. So I guess just like capping it off with um, the Luna Oi stuff. I really the Luna Oi stuff, which you've she brought it up with literally no purpose, no no point, no valid point whatsoever. It was shit that I debunked in. You, you can debunk in two seconds. In Vietnam, land is collectively owned by people and administered by the government on their behalf. Property owners cannot have full and legal ownership of the land. Their rights are limited to land use rights permitted within the law. That's the first fucking result on Google. Why don't you check the first fucking result on Google before you talk a load of bullshit? Which she's about to reiterate. It's like that she does this. It's obviously, I, I don't know if it's a grift. It comes off like a grift to me. How is this not a grift? How is changing your fucking beliefs the second that you gain any sort of mainstream fame at all. The second that the cops start benefiting you, you change your beliefs. The second that you start fraternizing with a bunch of imperialist streamers, you change your beliefs to attack the target of their, their virulent fucking racism. If anything is a grift, this is it. Like stating that land is free to farmers and capitalists can't own land and then going on your Facebook account and saying that you're selling a big plot of land suitable- Selling land usage rights and not giving a shit about who buys it is not some sort of personal announcement of anyone. Investment. And it's- If you're selling land suitable for investment- I've, We've already is, gone over this earlier. She's just reiterating the same shit. Who's gonna buy that a farm? No, it's gonna be- It's gonna be a capitalist. And? If you sell your house to someone who wants to rent it out, is that- should that be like some sort of personal announcement of you? You're not at fault because someone else is a landlord, you know? Take whatever you can get when you're selling some shit. I didn't give a fucking shit, man. It's just- None of these people give a shit about that either. These are the same people who are like, you know, who gives a shit about Hassan's house? Whatever. Three million dollar house? Not a big deal. A Fifteen thousand dollar plot of land? Huge fucking deal. Incredibly disingenuous. Talking about disingenuous, that's the most disingenuous fucking video I've ever seen in my life. She should be ashamed of this. I hope she will. But what's probably going to happen here is she's just going to ignore this, um, block me, you know, which, you know, will be dis it's already disappointing. But, you know, I expected whatever. I'm not just going to let someone who I used to respect just completely change their purported beliefs and principles the second they get a tiny little bit of frame and the second of fame just because, like, some liberal pedophile streamer has been nice to them a little bit recently. It's bullshit. Fuck that.